When you're young, you don't really focus too much about your credit score. When you apply for a credit card, you kind of just think two general rules. Make your payments on time and don't overspend. It's not until you start actually needing to get more credit is when you'll focus on your credit score and how do you actually improve it if you're not able to get the credit that you actually want. Today we're going to dive deep into the mechanics of credit score, how to build credit, the different ways that the credit bureaus look at your credit history to help make a number to say whether it's good, bad, or excellent, and what the implications of having a good credit score actually entail. So first we're just going to go into the credit score. And so it's typically reported by two different reporting agencies. The first being Equifax and the second being TransUnion. Now these two don't report on the same scale. So depending if you're checking your credit score somewhere, they're gonna look different. They're not gonna be the exact same. Uh, the other day I checked my credit score on Credit Karma, which is one of the tools that typically we like to recommend. And it was a certain score and I checked on a different one that used TransUnion and it was completely different. And I was kind of confused. But when you look at it, the metrics that they use, it's typically different, which means you have a different score overall. Now your score can range anywhere from 300 to 900. Anything below 500 typically needs work. It's not good credit. Um, it means that you're not doing something right when it comes to making payments on time, just applying for too much credit, or having a lot of hard inquiries on your credit card. Anything the score of 600 to around 650 is considered fair, so you're getting better, but it's not great. Lenders will look at it and say, you know, it's, it's all right, it's not anything to go home about and to actually give you a lot of credit, but it, it's better than having below 500. Then there's that 650 to 720-ish mark, which lenders say, okay, that's, that's pretty good. We're gonna be able to lend you a decent amount of credit. 720 to around 800 is considered very good credit. Um, and typically what most of you will fall under uh, in this category. And anything above 800 to that maximum of 900 is excellent credit. It means you're dinging all the right marks when it comes to the credit bureaus. It means you're making sure your payments are on time, you're making sure that you're utilizing your credit appropriately, you're not overspending like crazy, um, and you have some sort of long length of credit history to prove that you're reputable. Now we're gonna look at a couple of tips and tricks in order to get that perfect credit score. But before we hop into that, we gotta understand what are the mechanics of how credit bureaus actually calculate your score. So the first way a credit bureau looks at your score is by payment history. And this makes up 35% of your score. It is the biggest contributor of your overall credit score. So it is something to take heart in and it's really important to actually make sure that you're making those payments on time. Essentially it's simple, make those payments on time, your scores will be okay and you're gonna get an excellent rating for that. Credit bureaus typically use a payout ratio as the calculation for calculating the, the score you get on this. So you look at the amount of payments that you've made over a specific period of time and how many missed payments. For example, if you had a credit card for three years, so let's say three years, that's 36 months of billing periods, and you missed one payment. So you made 35 on-time payments out of the 36, which equals around 97%. Based on the scale that credit bureaus report at, they're wanting to see 99% and above. So they don't really want to see any missed payments. If you do have some, assuming you have a long length of history and it was just a mistake, they're gonna give you the benefit of the doubt, but they don't wanna see very many missed payments, if at all, any. They don't wanna see any of that. So 99% and above is considered good. 98% is okay. Anything below 97, they consider bad. They don't think you have uh, as good a credit history, you're not as reputable because you've made a couple of missed payments. Now, this could also be skewed because if you have, say, a credit card for only a year, 12 months, and you missed one credit card payment, that score is gonna be dramatic and your score is gonna drop by a decent amount because of that. Now, not to fret, obviously, the longer you have your credit card, the more you can prove yourself that you're able to pay back those payments and it might've just been a one-off type, you missed payment. Now, I typically don't advise people to do this, but last case resort, if you're not able to make your payment, just pay the minimum because this does count towards an on-time payment. Sure, you're gonna have some money outstanding, so you're gonna have interest on that, and we've talked about it on the channel. I mean, credit card debt is the worst type of debt that you can have. It's high interest-bearing debt, 
which means you're gonna be paying a lot of interest throughout the entirety until that principal is actually paid off. But worst case, if you're wanting to make sure your payments are on time, just pay the minimum, it'll continue to be on time payment, your credit report will show no missed payments. Again, this is worst case scenario, I would not advise it, just pay off it in full. Now the second metric they use is the credit utilization, and this makes up 30% of your score. So another big, fairly decent chunk of your score, that 30% being credit utilization and 35 being on-time payments, that's 65% of your score. Credit utilization is essentially how much credit are you using compared to the limit you have. So in Canada, typically the credit bureau wants to see anywhere below 30%, if you're using more, maxing your credit card entirely, constantly, barely paying it down, obviously your credit utilization is gonna be very high and your credit score is gonna be affected because of that. So for example, if you're using $3,000 of your credit card and you have a $10,000 limit, 30% of your credit is being used, your credit utilization rate is 30%. Now on a scale, the credit bureaus look at how much should your utilization actually be. So 29% and below is considered good. 20, 30% to around 49%, they're saying, okay, that's all right. But anything above 50% of your actual limit, they're gonna say that's bad. You're maxing out your card too much and using too much credit. Now it's interesting because credit cards are used so that you can use credit, but they don't want you maxing it out entirely. So making sure that you have a lot of credit is a good thing. Making sure that you're not utilizing all the amount is something that will benefit your score overall. One of the things that I constantly do whenever I go to the bank, whenever I go in or I'm talking to someone on the phone, between that six to 12 month period, I'm always asking for a credit card increase. Every six to 12 months, ask for an increase. This will help your credit utilization score and overall impact will benefit your credit score. Now the third metric that they use is the length of credit history. And this makes up about 15% of your actual score. So a minimal impact compared to the top two that we just talked about but still something that is decent. A lot of people ask, do I keep my credit card open if I'm not using it? And if it's your longest outstanding form of credit, I would say yes, as long as it's not costing you any money, keep that credit open because it's gonna affect your credit score if you close it and your average length of credit history is gonna shorten. For those of you who are viewing our channel are younger, say 18, you're just able to get a credit card, I would encourage you to get one. If you don't have a credit card in your past 18, get one, stop the video right now, sign up and get one. It's important to get some form of credit early on to help build that history throughout the years. Now for me, I had credit when I was 17 because I applied for a student loan. That was a form of credit that I established at that time. And then after when I was 18, I, I applied for a credit card. Now for me, when I was 17, I was able to show length of credit history by applying for a student loan. And this might be some of you who are just entering post-secondary. After that, I was able to apply for a credit card and now I keep those same accounts open because I know that's gonna affect my average length of credit history if I were to close them. It's not costing me anything. For, for those of you who have watched our channel, we did a video on student loans. Uh, we're located in BC, so we do not have any interest in our student loans right now. So there is a benefit to actually not paying it back as quick as possible. And we're gonna release a video of the impacts of paying it down quicker versus investing and all of that. But for me, it's not costing anything. So I'm keeping that student loan open because it's gonna increase my average length of credit history, as well as the credit card that I applied for when I was 18. Again, one thing to mention is it's not just the longest amount of credit you have, it's the average length of credit history. So if you have a credit card for 10 years and you apply for a credit card today and you only have two, that's gonna shorten it to five years total. For those viewers who are younger and just got a credit card, don't worry about this, it takes time. It's not something where your credit score is gonna be dramatically affected, it only makes 15% of your actual credit score but it will take time to slowly build that length of credit history and will hopefully benefit your score in the long run. The fourth metric that they use is the type of credit and this makes up 10%. Now, essentially the credit bureau is just wanting to make sure that you can handle multiple different forms of debt. So this might be an auto loan, a mortgage, credit card, loan, student loan, for example. Um, they just wanna make sure that you have an overall mix and you're able to make those payments on time and to be able to manage your finances accordingly. And lastly, number five is credit applications. 
or hard inquiries. And this makes up 10% of your overall score. Applying for more credit than you need or applying for credit constantly can actually hurt your score overall. It's interesting because you want to have enough credit utilization. You don't want to max out your credit cards too much. You want to be able to have some form of different types of credit, but you don't want to be applying for too much credit overall in a short period of time. Essentially, the credit bureau looks at this and says, why did me, for example, why did I apply for an auto loan, a student loan, and a line of credit in one day. What What's the reasoning behind this? Is it because I'm going bankrupt and I can't afford to fund my lifestyle? Am I unable to pay back that money? Uh, they take that into account and your credit score will be impacted because of that. Hard inquiries are typically on your credit report for about two years and they only really affect your score for a year. So typically after a year, you can apply for more credit and wait for that full year and then you can apply for another one and it's not gonna dramatically affect your score. Now, another thing to, to note is a lot of people use brokers nowadays, mortgage broker, for example, you're looking for a mortgage. The credit bureau looks at when you're rate shopping to not really affect your credit score as a whole. So if you're getting multiple credit checks, say five in the span of a week, it's not gonna come up as five hard inquiries on your report. It's only gonna come up with one. They're gonna bundle it together because they wanna encourage you to rate shop. This overall is in the best interest of the consumer, us, to make sure that we're doing our due diligence and it won't affect our credit score overall. Now we talked about credit score, but how do you actually check your credit? Now there's multiple different platforms that you can use. I already mentioned a couple. Credit Karma and BorrowWell are two that I like to use. Credit Karma is with Equifax and BorrowWell is with TransUnion. So there are two different reporting bureaus. So you'll have two different scores, don't be alarmed. Um, but there are two great platforms that help notify you when your credit changes. And just to give you a general idea of what uh, it is and how you can build it to better for your future. Now it's also good to constantly check your credit because there are fraudulent activities that happen that are reported on your credit report that are actually false. And you can report these to the credit bureau to make sure that they take them off. Because the worst thing that could happen is your credit gets checked, you're trying to apply for a mortgage, for example, and they say your credit score is awful, you miss too many payments, and it's below 500. And this isn't true. So making sure that your credit report is accurate is very important, especially when you actually need to get credit. So there you have it. Those are the five main metrics that they use to generate a credit score for you. Now, in order to get a good credit score, you're gonna need to focus on a couple of things and you might not be able to make it perfect, but at least you can make it better for your future. Number one is establish a credit history. Make sure that you have a credit card, that you're keeping that average length longer. You don't close credit cards that are old, but you keep them open if it's not hurting you. Use that credit responsibly. And number two, make sure to make your payments on time. Number three, make sure your credit utilization is not too high. Don't be maxing out your credit cards every month. Make sure it's nice and low to have a good report. Four, if you can, try to have a mix of credit. So have multiple different forms of credit that will help kind of make sure that you can handle different types of debt. And five, make sure you limit the credit applications that you have, because if you apply for too much credit over a short period of time, it's gonna affect your credit score. Now, alongside that, make sure to monitor your credit report, be patient, and it takes time to build your credit score because these stages right now, especially if you're younger, the state steps that you make right now will set you up for your future. And when you apply for a big form of credit, say a mortgage, it's gonna be very beneficial to have that credit history. Thank you very much for listening, guys. We hope that you were able to understand a little bit more about credit score, how it's calculated, and how to improve your credit score over time. These are things that will greatly benefit you in your future and allow you to take on more credit later on in life.